Hey everyone, welcome back to the garage. Uh, so I need to open up the gearbox to swap out gear ratios for the next track. So I thought I'd take the chance to show you guys what the inside of the gearbox looks like, how it works, and how it's different than a road car. All right, so here at the back of the car, and you can see uh, the engine right there in the middle. And then we've, we've got the oil tank right here. We've got the differential housed right here. And then the gearbox is actually right here in this area. Uh, and then we have the reverse gear and the selector fork back here. So to get into the gearbox, we have to take this cover off and then um, we're going to do some things with the back. We'll take the reverse gear off and undo a couple bolts. And then uh, we're going to undo all these bolts around here and then take this part off uh, and then move it on, over onto the table. So here we have the rear cover removed, exposing the reverse gear assembly and the selector fork, which is what I'm actually operating from the cockpit. Uh, first and second gear are right here in the middle. Um, third and fourth are right here, and then you can see the reverse gear down on the bottom. There's actually a plunger, a spring-operated plunger, on the um, rear cover that prevents accidental activation or selection of the reverse gear. The large gear on top is connected to the output shaft, which goes into the differential and turns the wheels. And the smaller one on the bottom is connected to the engine. Now, in order to take the gearbox apart completely, we'll have to remove these two pins and take off the two castle nuts. Uh, after we do that, we'll have, to do un we'll have to undo all the bolts holding the case on, uh, and then it should slide off pretty easily. All right, so we got the assembly that we just took out. Uh, this right here is the input shaft coming from the engine, and then this is the dummy output shaft that goes to the, re to the wheels. I'll take this guy out and lay him out over here. A couple of gears that are stuck inside. That's fourth gear, and then there's a spacer right here. So we're gonna try and keep these all neat so we know which is which. This one right here, take the shaft out. Uh, this one right here with the, the, the spacer integrated into it is first gear. Then there's second gear, then there's another spacer, and then there's third gear, a larger spacer, then fourth gear, and then another spacer at the end. And we'll put this guy right here. Now this part is the tricky one. Uh, there's a few parts that are left in the gearbox. So this right here is first gear, and then that fits around this hub uh, that I'll talk, to, talk about in a second. And then we got these guys. I want to try to keep them in order. So we got another spacer right here. So this is second gear. This guy over here. This is third gear. This is the other hub. The other dog collar and then fourth gear, and then another spacer. So now if you notice, there's a bit of a pattern here. We've got first gear, second gear together, and then we have a spacer, and then we have third gear and fourth gear. Now the way that this works is that this hub has these two bearings. So they have these two bearings that go around them, and each gear fits around this one like that. And then this is the uh, dog collar that I'm actually controlling from the cockpit. So this fits along here like this. And then 
This is the assembly of um, third gear and fourth gear. And then this right here is what I'm controlling with the gear lever. So if you notice that the, each one has teeth, there's teeth here, there's teeth here, and then there's teeth on the inside uh, here. So what happens is that when it's in neutral, or when it's in first or second gear, um, the inside is spinning around like this. Or rather, the gears are spinning freely around the hub. Uh, remember that each output gear is always meshed to its partner input gear. And in order for engine power to flow to the wheels, one of the two dog collars in between each gear set needs to be meshed to one of the four gears. Notice that there are wide gaps between teeth on both the gear and the dog collar. Uh, this is what allows the driver to make rapid shifts without using the clutch. And in fact, using the clutch will throw the timing of the shift off, costing time on the racetrack and increasing wear and tear on the gearbox. So taking the gearbox apart is actually the easy part, and um, putting it back together is kind of a different ballgame. Uh, it's like a giant puzzle. Uh, so I've already pulled out the new gear ratios that I want to swap in um, out of our big collection. So I'm going to replace the old gear ratios here on the table with the new ones, and then we'll get to work putting it together. So I have to put that bearing in there. Then we have to put the dummy shaft through, and we have to fit everything together, but they don't really quite go in in a way that is completely intuitive. So these guys go in like this. Now the problem is that once we put this in like this, now we can't fit anything else in because these guys have to go in here, but they have to go with the dummy shaft around it. And then the real problem is that this guy, so this guy goes in first, and then this guy goes in, and then I have to get this around the dummy shaft, but also that goes up into the forks. So I can't put this in while the, the input shaft is where it is. So I have to take most of the input shaft out, leaving only the spacer and fourth gear in. I'm going to have to try to line these up as best as I can. And then I have to put this in here. No. So bearing bearings will take off. Now we have to put we have to put this in here like so. put in third gear, which is make sure that all the numbers are right. Now we have about half the gearbox assembled, so now I'm going to stick the dummy shaft in so that everything stays aligned. It's going to be a little bit tricky. I also have to get this bearing carrier in before I stick the dummy shaft in. It would be great if I had an extra arm. There we go. So now that's through. Then we can put this spacer on, and then we basically have to do the same thing again. This guy has to go around here, then you have to take the dummy shaft out a little bit so that you can get this gear in.
And there we go. Now we, uh, that's the gearbox assembled. Now we just have to go put it back on the case.